What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're gonna to talk about true red tail boas, boa constrictor constrictor. This video topic came to me from somebody on Instagram who watches my YouTube videos. Uh, we reached out and said, hey Jason, I'm thinking about getting a boa constrictor constrictor, but I'm hearing all kinds of stories that they're these bitey monsters and they're crazy snakes, they're super susceptible to respiratory infections and they're basically just really delicate animals. I want a pet. Can I get a bow constrictor constrictor as a pet or are they truly this hands-off display snake that needs the ultimate climate controlled enclosures? So I thought it was a good video topic. I shot him a quick little response back and, and gave him my general thoughts but I said I think this is something I would like to cover in a whole video and he thought it would be fantastic. He even gave me a title so I like the title, I like the video topic and here we are. So diving right into it, before we start off, I want to show you this is a boa constrictor constrictor. This one is from Peru. It is a Pacalpa Peruvian boa constrictor, a true red tail boa. And uh, you can definitely see that, man, that, that is like this burgundy deep red tail that is just fantastic. He's got this dark uh, pattern on its back and these, these kind of spaced out Saturns. Peruvians are something that I'm working with a lot and they are by far my favorite boa constrictor constrictor. Uh, just something about it to me, I kind of fell into them and fell in love with them at the same time. So I've decided that rather than focusing everywhere, I do have some Guyanas, uh, I do have a Cernem, but I really want to put all my focus into Peruvians. Now, I want to talk about a little bit of this later on in the video, but let's dive right into where they get this reputation of being these crazy bitey monsters and super susceptible to different types of diseases like pneumonia and respiratory infections. So a lot of this stems from truth and facts is that most of these animals coming in are going to be Cernem or Guyana, or at least that's what they're going to be imported as, uh, Cernem or Guyana wild caught imported animals. Now that right there is, in my opinion, the source of the problem. You'll also see this occur with Amazon tree boas, uh, or emerald tree boas, I'm sorry, is that these animals are getting imported from the wild. A lot of the times the import procedures, uh, the people who are importing them, these conditions are absolutely filthy. So even if you have a healthy animal, you have one sick animal and you're importing a group of 100 or 500 or 1,000 animals, um, that could pass through every other animal. Now the chances are you're going to have multiple sick animals or you're going to have these really dirty conditions through the import process and if you have a healthy animal it's, it's going to be sick by the time it comes to you or it's going to have some type of a parasite or whatever it may be that, that that's what's going to start you off automatically in a really bad position with pet snakes uh, or I should say pet wild caught snakes. So when you're, when you're obtaining a wild caught animal, and I've said this in my other videos, but anytime you're obtaining a wild caught animal, one, there's an, a massive amount of stress being placed on this animal. You're taking it from a wild environment with unlimited space, unlimited resources, and, and a danger factor in its own sense that these animals have to have instincts to protect themselves. Uh, but you're taking them from this wild environment, throwing them in a bag, throw them in some crates, and importing them in. I personally think the whole importation process is uh, kind of shameful in its own sense, but also necessary. So it, it's really this struggle of we do need importation of animals because their wild is getting destroyed. But at the same time, I think that we're importing too much. It should be more selective to get a nice group of imported animals in, into the hands of, of breeders who can really propagate these in captivity so that we could all experience them, but we could experience healthy animals. Leave the wild alone. Let us experience the healthy animals from captive bred specimens selected from really nice imported animals but uh, it, it's it's a money-making product for a lot of these people and I can't shame them on it so that's a whole different topic but with that whole importation process it's what I'm getting at is it's extremely stressful anytime you have a stressful environment on the animal it lowers their immune system including humans if we're stressed our, our immune system is lowered then we go out and we can easily contract different types of diseases. If our conditions aren't right, you know, with these animals, they're cold blooded. If they're kept in a little bit of cold for too long, they can start to get respiratory infections. If the conditions are dirty for a little bit, the bacteria will impact them. And it really does turn into this situation where uh, by the time we get it in captivity in our homes, these animals are in very poor condition. 
it does take a lot to get them back and it takes experience to get them back. Not necessarily just experience, but experience and knowledge. You need to understand these animals in their habitat so that you can get them right into exactly what they need to be in. Now, what I would always prefer and recommend is, is captive breeding. Captive bred animals are just much healthier. They're born into captivity. They're born into the environment that we put them in, and that's what they're, they're acclimated to. They're not acclimated to 90% humidity and raining every day and, and all these different types of microclimates. They're acclimated to whatever we are born, whatever they're born into, and, and the hide boxes that we give them, the cages that we give them. That's their home. That's what they're comfortable and accustomed to. No different than other cultures all around the world. When we think about it in that perspective, is you'll have you know, people from South America versus North America versus Asia, and they're all living in a different type of environment. If you take these people and force them to live the way that others have lived, it's going to be a stressful transition for them. So that's kind of my 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 parody to uh, taking a wild caught animal. But beyond that factor, these animals, when we get them as wild caught, they need to be really on point. And there is truth to that statement that they're they're delicate animals. They're gonna be defensive and, and nervous and scared of everything around them. We just stole them from their home, put them in a box and said, here's your new home with us. Eat, I wanna handle you, and I want you to thrive. It's not gonna happen that way. So to that point, it, it is 100% true that these animals do not do well in captivity. Uh, and they are more of a expert to very advanced keeper uh, type of snake. Now, getting to captive bred animals. I've, breed, I've bred a few generations of Peruvian boas, and um, I've, I've bred Guyanas in the past. I was hoping to have them this year. We'll see if we have them. And I've also had some wild caught animals, so I do have a comparison. And they're, in my opinion, my opinion only, is that BCC is almost exactly like any other boa comparator out there. You can treat them the same, you give them the same conditions, they're just as hardy, if not hardier. Um, actually, I lied about that, we'll, we'll come back to that. But they're just as hardy as any other boa imperator out there. They're not delicate, they can become great pets. As you see, this guy here, he's probably about 12 to 15 years old now. I don't know the exact age because I got him as an older animal, and he's been here with me for quite some time. He's he sired a few litters of Peruvian boas for me, and um, he's just an awesome snake. You can see some of the snakes when I'm in here, I'm handling them and they're all over the place. This guy's just chilling out, relaxing. He's a really cool snake. He has no problems with me holding them and it's it's a fantastic pet he can hang out with me for hours now granted I'm in a room that's 80 degrees right now if I were in my 70 degree living room or 65 or it's winter time and my house is down in the 60s not not my reptile room but my house in general there is truth to that, but that applies to every snake that there's a limited amount of time that you can hold these animals. Right now, again, I'm in an 80 degree room. If it's summertime outside, I might bring them outside, let them catch some sun in the grass, let them sprawl out and, and really enjoy himself. Uh, that is where it, they make fantastic pets. There, there's nothing wrong with them. Now, that goes to say that, again, with a wild caught animal, you can still transition them to this point here, but there's gonna be a struggle getting them there. And it's not gonna be an overnight process. It's not like buying a captive bred animal of any kind and just managing them as, as your pet. Doesn't work that way. It is a slow transition and you almost never wanna treat them like a captive bred animal. They, they are just always gonna be very, very delicate. And, and uh, even when you get them to a great point as if they were like this, um, it's still, you gotta think that, man, these animals were just taken from their home and now they're used to it, but it's still, there's that factor in there. That's again, just my opinion. Now where care does differ on these is that they do require slightly more consistent temperatures. So where boa imperators are in more of a, their natural climate, climate can vary and fluctuate a little bit. Um, boa constrictors are from the Amazon basin and areas that have fairly consistent temperatures. Now Peru itself, where these guys are from, it will vary, but again, it's so close to the equator that we're having very, very minor seasonal fluctuations. You'll have very high humidity, and that's what these animals are for. It's kind of like an anaconda 
uh, they live in the water and if you're forcing them to live in out of the water with a little water bowl it's not going to be natural to them so it, they can still do okay and they can still still thrive and survive in that condition but they may be more susceptible if you're going to be frequently and heavily handling so if you have a place like if you live in florida uh, for the most part, these boas are going to be really well acclimated to that weather. It's going to be high humidity, and you may be able to handle them a lot more than if I were up here where I am in New England, where we have some pretty dry winter times. My heat kicks on, and it just dries out this air very much. So that's where you're going to have to worry about those respiratory infections, is the drier climates. Just like us in the winter time, a lot of humans, they have a difficult time in the winter because the air is so dry then you kind of put us into the summertime and the air is a little bit too humid. We can, you know, sometimes we, we don't we don't like that, but we really need that nice middle ground. So same thing with these snakes is anytime you don't meet their conditions, uh, which I'll go into a little bit, but that can be a whole new video topic, is that anytime you don't meet their conditions, they're going to be a stress factor that could impact them and could cause them to be ill. So conditions for a boa constrictor constrictor, I keep them just like my boa imperators. Uh, my whole room here is about 70% 70, 70 humidity. My cool temperature, I'm gonna just use a year round average, is about 78 degrees to 82 degrees or so. My hot temperature is somewhere around 90 to 95 um, for their hot spots in their cages. Again, my room temperature right here that I'm sitting in, right now it's about 80 degrees. So it's, it's pretty warm and 70% humidity. So uh, I don't, I'm sweating and I'm usually sweating in my videos and that's why. So are they these these fragile, bitey monsters? I'm going to say no, as long as you get the right animal. Uh, as, but you get a, you're going to have to pay for it. There is, uh, there's no way that you can say, I'm going to take a $300 wild-caught animal and compare it to a $1,000 captive-bred animal. Me, personally, I say if you can't get the wild-caught, or if you can't get the, the captive-bred animal, don't support the wild-caught trade and get these animals. We're taking too many from the wild that are just going to be put in captivity and killed by somebody that doesn't know what they're doing or isn't prepared for what they're getting themselves into. Now, if you want a challenge and you're an experienced keeper, and I don't mean just an experienced boa keeper, I just ex mean experienced keeper. You know medications, you know the things that you're getting yourselves into with diseases and parasites and, and different things that are going to be coming your way, then it may be something that you want to try. But if you don't have that experience, don't buy a wild caught animal, don't kill another animal, and don't support this trade. Some of you guys aren't going to like me for that, but that's how I feel. I feel strongly about that is uh, wild caught animals should be reserved for people who really understand what they're doing and who are purchasing them for, them for a purpose. Uh, and, and the more we support this trade, the more we continue to purchase these animals at high dollars, the more it's going to happen. And, and eventually we're going to have no animals left in the wild. Uh, that may be an extreme example, but it's, uh, in my opinion, it's just not something we should support. So leave the wild caught animals to people who are experienced and ready to handle them. Look for captive bred animals from experienced breeders and breeders who can give you the whole story, who can hold your hand the whole step of the way and, and guide you to how to take care of these things. So with that said, hopefully I don't bother anybody with what I said in this video, but I'm going to end it here. I'm going to show this guy off one more time because he's gorgeous and I appreciate you guys watching here. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, hit that like button. I It just, it really helps. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to show you this guy here get off camera so you can see him but just check out that tail there's a reason why people want these boas they're beautiful snakes but there's nothing beautiful about a snake that's that's suffering and, and trying to hold on to life until we eventually kill it in captivity because uh, we couldn't take care of it and we weren't prepared for what we're getting into this is me giving you guys a warning they're not easy to take care of a wild caught animal I do not buy wild caught animals anymore because I don't want to deal with it it's a lot of work it's expensive and you really need to know what you're doing. I have had wild caught animals, I have raised them successfully, and I've bred them successfully, but it is a challenge that I am just not willing to take on. It's a headache that I don't want to deal with. So please take this advice, but at the same time, don't let that don't let that scare you away from buying a boa constrictor constrictor. Just do your research and buy it from the right people who can guide you the whole way. So again, I appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and share this video if you think it's worthy. Appreciate it all, guys. Thank you. See you next week.